success into this list. Both players now preparing for what is an extremely important matchup for them both for the reasons we have just outlined. Both Warriors are being banned, as we uh, neglected to mention earlier, but you can see there on the graphic. We're back to fairly standard-looking Hearthstone over after what? some of the things that we saw what? yesterday with the Bomb Warriors being banned and the uh, remainder of the six decks chosen by the players queuing up into each other. We are going to kick things off with a bang with uh, Bosden trying to pick up his first win on uh, on Rogue this season after diverting to the Burgle Rogue away from that weapon Rogue. Yeah, he's going to be going up against that Druid of Falcon, And Falcon is bringing the double oh. melt seller list uh, to help out with that empty seven cost slot. Basically, now that Guardian Animals cost eight. So he's going to have a lot of wiggle room to clean up uh, boards, right? He has crystal power, he has animated broomsticks along with those mount sellers and bog beams and such. So... Oh, sorry, he isn't playing Bog Beams. Apologies. So he's actually missing on that. But most importantly, he does just have a ton of stuff in that mid to late game to fight back some boards from Bosdom. Yes, but unfortunately for the Druid, Bosdom has drawn the most illegal looking rogue hand I have ever seen in my life. Like, this goes twice against the yeah. potential... Uh, for removal. Like, you can actually make the big Edwin and the big questing here, potentially on back-to-back -back turns, using this plagiarize as well to get yourself some more resources. But actually, Boston just says, you know what? Forget about it. Game ender. Just, just get like... it. <laughs> just slam it on the table, hit face twice, <laughs> end the Falcon. game. <laughs> yes, that is how I want Language Hacker to clap in America. That is the type of clap I want. The thumbs up for Valkyrie. You know what? My third one's pretty good. Uh, let's not play it on turn four or five to activate it. Let's just play it on, <laughs> on, on turn two. Let's just uh, let's just play it now. It's fine. Yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> I honestly, it's a twelve-twelve, and it's cleared yeah. Felcane's whole board. There's just nothing left. Yeah. Perfect. I I hate suggesting this, but I wouldn't be too surprised if Felcane considers just conceding at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, he... So he's going to be on four mana. He would have to draw exactly second bloom into Guardian Animals next turn, right? If, if we're being realistic on what beats this. Or, or what survives this, should I say. You play this questing. I feel like you just play this questing, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if he draws a secret passage next turn or something, you know, like, there's so many options that make this better. Right. Dream Hero Power, that's going to deal with the Plagiarize now as well, so Boston will get a broom in his hand. Insane. It does mean 5, 6, 7. See, that's the big difference. We, we are seeing it to an extent, right? Next turn, Falcane could bloom into the air. Uh, oh my. He actually did get Secret Passage as well. Did Boston cast it so fast it's stuck? Okay, there we go. Secret's oh, fine. Oh, this! That's just game. Oh my, oh my. Right. So that's miserable, but Felcane just can't even be bothered about that game of Hearthstone. He can, <laughs> no. he, he can be upset later, obviously, but I think now there's nothing he could have done. That was just a game he didn't get to play. So move on. It's done. Boston I leading 1-0. I feel like that was just another addition to, like, Falcane's showreel or, like, his headshots, you know, where he's got this very elastic, expressive face, and I think we've seen a huge range of emotions. So I feel like he's just been handing out these headshots, like, okay, here's me when I'm happy, here's me <laughs> doing sad. Here's, and now here is stoic acceptance. This is quite a difficult one to go for, but here it is. Just Edwin Van Cleef three times to the face, or twice to the face, plus an eviscerate in the end, just completely ending that game. Yeah, and there just isn't much he could have done about it there. That's just one of those hands that wins, especially versus Druid. I said, I think yesterday, right? Where I said that it's similar, where we've not seen just a Van Cleef carry a single game of Hearthstone in quite a right. while. And now we've seen two in two days, which is scaring me, I'm not going to lie. But it does mean we are going to be moving swiftly on into our next matchup. And it's going to be a tough one for Boston, at least on paper, as Falcon is going to be queuing that Druid once again. And Boston is going for the Demon Hunter. I just now like the idea of Boston sitting there going, oh, that's why you bring this rogue. I've been trying to hit them with weapons the whole time. I yep. just didn't have preps and Edwins in my deck the whole time. That's what I was doing wrong. Now I get it. 
Yeah, and then every game forever now, he just does a massive Van Cleef on turn two, and he's like, yeah, okay, this just seems to be working. We are going to go straight into our this game number two, though, Boston, of course, on three. Brother. start with that game number one. This one, though, going to be a bit of a tough matchup because he's running Altruis in his list uh, and not running Magtheridon. And what really surprises me, Sotol, is he's running Altruis, but no pen flingers. Yeah, it's a weird looking list for sure. I did take note of this as I was going through them this morning. Um, again, like, when you bring Demon Hunter now, you do tend to disrespect Druid after the nerf because you, you feel like you can just line up Demon Hunter to go through. And I think also there's this mentality where you try and build a Demon Hunter deck that beats some of the bad matchups because Demon Hunter has actually now become one of the decks to counter for quite a few people as right. well. Like, we're seeing, seeing all these weird, like... Frostbolt in Mage plus Librum Paladin kind of things coming together. So you want to do something just a little bit different with your Demon Hunter decks in most positions here, just so you can uh, beat up some of the matchups that you're expecting to come back against you. Um, but yeah, normally the Altruis is in combination with the Penflinger because of the synergy with those cards have. Uh, same with Consume Magic as well. But Austin's only gone kind of halfway here with the build that he has. Yeah, I mean, this is less about Altrius and more just it's a direct swap for Magtheridon. Because if you mm -hmm. swapped Magtheridon in, this looks like a pretty oh, standard God. list. Uh, yeah. I guess the double Glade Bounds as well. But so far, Austin is making a bit of a push on the board. And this is exactly the kind of hand he wants, right? Get minions on board nice and early. Start pressuring some damage, have some board presence, and then work into the power plays. And with that skull pretty much to the far left, then it's looking like at least the game plan is lining up very well for Boston. Yeah, and I think the game plan is lining up very well, um, less so because of anything that he has in his hand and because of one particular card that Falcane does not have in his hand. Right. Because I think if he were to see Overgrowth next turn, or actually he would have just seen Overgrowth that turn, right? With the discount um, still being applied for Falcane. So I think now Boston is very, very happy that he might just have that couple of extra turns he needs in a no-ramp game to be able to uh, execute all this mana and get it all face. I think he can add one more turn to that as well, because next turn, in preparation for the skull, he can just mana burn. Mm. He has two mana burns against Druid. It's insane. Okay. All right, getting the weapon active. Get that mana burn down, build up for next turn. Next turn, he then has the flexibility between Glaive Bound and mana burn with the weapon swing, or he can actually just go for Skull instead. Hmm. Your opponent just went Coin Beast, so there's a pretty good chance they want to Beast again, right? They're not really... It, it doesn't feel like a hand where they're like saving up um, multiple Innovates and Blooms to do something powerful. It feels like a hand that they're just going to curve out with, so I do agree that the Mana burn feels quite important. Austin will just be uh, a little sad here that he doesn't have any way to deny this card draw. But if you can't deny the card draw, the next best thing you can do is deny them from being able to play any yeah, of those cards exactly. that they draw. That's it. It's either beast number two or desperation of Falcon needing to draw into something. Either of those things are great mana burn targets. I, li I like this a lot from Boston. Uh, no he doesn't even have to swing. I think with twin slice, second slice, he's uh, by no means forced to. He's going to have that flexibility of swinging no matter what with the Glade Bound next turn, but I like the hold. Yeah, swung first with the hero power yes, just to yeah. preserve the charges on the weapon when, as you said, he still has <laughs> Twin Slice with potential for Blade Dance to come off the skull at some point, and he already has that one attack locked in that he wants potentially with the Glade Bound Adept next turn. It could just be Glade Bound Mana Burn again next turn, right? That I, actually seems pretty powerful. The... the the more you, you look at it, yeah, because, I mean, you saw Falcon kind of shrug then, because if he wasn't mana burned, he could have at least played Overgrowth this turn, and then his hand looks a lot better. Can't, so Glaive Bound into, a, into mana burn looks good, and I think he can even just face tank this 5-2 and push the extra damage face. I think so too. The scary part of the mana burn this turn is that you would still just give them Overgrowth quite happily on the following turn whether or not you're okay to do that or not. I guess that interaction works out okay for you because you mana burn, they skip their turn playing Overgrowth, and then you get a free Skull with a 6-4 yeah, yeah. on board. Like, yeah, that seems pretty fine. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for Felkane. These two games of Hearthstone have just not been that fun for him, have they? <laughs> nope. No amount of wobbling your arms around <laughs> is going to get you out of this one, Felkane. I'm sorry. Well, 
even without that, right, he had Broom Thresher, Broom Twilight Runner that turn that he could have played if it wasn't Mana Burned. So it's just, yep. it's all lined up so horribly for him. But I, I have 100% agreed with how Boston's played oh. this. I think it... Oh. Okay. Well, lethal next turn? <laughs> Don't think he needs to swing. Doesn't he? He's floating well, damage this turn if he doesn't it, swing. It, if it's he, a straight-up it, two-turn lethal setup, he should swing this turn. Right? He, yeah. Unless mm, he might need the blade dance damage exactly. to bust through a taunt, though, I guess is the problem. Exactly. This makes a bigger, much bigger blade dance next turn and makes it less likely he has to, like, double blade dance in some respects, which actually Ooh. saves him mana and so on. So okay. I, actually, I actually like this. Well, what you got, Felcane? He just a taunt, back, which was guaranteed, right? Yep. Second taunt. Get Altruis on that board right now. <laughs> yep. You can twin slice, twin slice, blade dance. He has soul shit as well to bust through. Hmm. Should be fine, right? He can play the other uh, war blades from the right hand side if as well he needs to unlock to, but I props. don't even think he does. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how everyone's doing it, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. I mean, the fact that one of his blade dance is zero mana anyway mm -hmm. is more than enough. So, sheer this taunt? Yeah, I like this, because then if this re summons a taunt. You have the clear on the second taunt instead of the first one. If it yep. drops the 1-4 or the 3-3, three, three, you're able to blade dance that away instead. Wow. There's a different way you could have done, gone about it from the left-hand side, where you soul shear and then use the shard shatter to do a very similar thing while getting the outcast from the left-hand side. But as long as he sequenced it in some way where his AoE damage was hitting the minion that the teacher's pet dropped, I think that was always guaranteed for Boston. Yeah, and obviously that was helped a lot about, uh, but by not only Boston's hand and the mana burns that were obviously huge in that game, but also by the struggle that Felcane had, not having access to the ramp, and then the second he did, not having access to the mana to cast it because of that mana burn. But I think Boston really did just just get the most out of every single turn there. He had a good hand, of course, but I think the planning of it and the timing of everything uh, pretty much led him to that win as well. It did, yeah. But uh, now we are flip-flopping Raven and Druid officially sucks. That is, that's the story <laughs> now. Yesterday, Druid was absolutely fine, if not buffed. Now it's absolute hot garbage. That is the reactionary take that we are forced to go with now. But Felcane does at least have a couple more chances to be able to get this Druid over the line. But I imagine he might feel like playing some Hearthstone at this point, so might just take his good matchup first with the Demon Hunter going into the Mage on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think here, honestly, it is just, it is tough to, it looks like Druid sucks, like like you said, right? And I know you're joking to an extent, uh, but it does look bad. But also, these have been two exceptional games from Boston in which how things have planned, panned out for him. So it, it's laid on top. Yes, Druid might isn't like, as strong as it was, but it, it's not that weak. That just looked silly because of the outcomes on Boston's side. But let's dive straight back into this series. Game number three. Boston, of course, only having his mage left to get a win with Felcane. He's got a lot of work to do. And honestly, after those past two games, he probably doesn't even feel like it right now, does he? <laughs> nope. But again, he's got to re-motivate because this is a huge match for him. Obviously, it's brutal in such a big match to be starting out really 0-2 down without anything you could have possibly done about it. But again, if he picks up the win here in this match, he is going to be secured in a top four position, which means playoffs, which means really an above average season from the point where you end up in Division B. If you yeah. then end up in playoffs, you've done above average by definition almost because it's the top half of the division there that goes to playoffs. Exactly, yeah. And it's a big deal because it's a recovery route because you, you end up in Division B because you did worse than half of the Grandmasters in your region. But if you end yeah. up in playoffs anyway, even if it's a bit more of a tougher road, well, you can still go to Worlds, right? There's no rule that you can't be from Division B and go. So it's a huge deal. But here, though, we do have Bosden on the uh, the Spellkin list with the Arcane Breath, which is one I've never personally been a fan of. 
Uh, I'm much more lean towards the uh, the arcane intellect and conjurers versions. But uh, but what, what do you make of this list? Do you think it's got what it takes still? Um, I do like this list. I certainly when like or, when Orange debuted it, I did try it out, and I did enjoy just the never running out of cards factor that comes with this deck. You know, you generate so many one mana cards that could end up being magic tricks or evocations or whatever yeah. else that you just almost never run out of resources. Whereas <laughs> with the arcane intellect build, you can run dry a little bit more often. Um, but it certainly can operate a bit more slowly sometimes because you have those extra clunky minions in your deck. You can draw a very minion heavy hand that doesn't really curve out super smoothly. But really either way, I think in this matchup, it's not really about any of those additional cards that are in the deck back and forwards, except maybe the Conjurer's Calling, right? That yeah. can have a, a big impact when the Mana Giant comes down if you do get it cheap enough. But plan A for both versions of the deck is just get your Mana Giant cheap and then try and find some way to create some defensive tools that didn't really start in your deck with Mirror Images, Ice Barrier, Frostbolt, Deep Freeze, all of those kind of things that can buy you additional time. Yeah, and Boston has been put on the back foot here. Both decks are more than capable at winning the early game minion fights, but mm -hmm. I feel that Mage needs to do it more to actually have a better chance in the matchup. I think when Demon Hunter's on the defensive, Mage is at its best because then it has the room to either hold on to some resources or utilize Ray of Frosts, uh, for example, for cheap removal and keep the tempo up. But mm -hmm. but when Demon Hunter gets at, like the the tempo and has card draw, that's when you need to be a little bit worried as the mage player here. Alex Straza. All right, Boston's planning for the long game here. You sh should have picked Pyro instead of that Learn Draconic. I knew it. <laughs> it's just a one-two punch. Easy. Yeah. Somehow don't expect that you will have the freedom to Alex your opponent and then Pyro blast them. Imagine if anything, that might end up as a more defensive tool. We'll see. Certainly could stick aboard with the Mana Giants, where Alex Straza just comes down and surprise lethal if Felcane can't deal with it. Definitely less likely without Conjurer's Calling, though, right? So it's uh, yep. less likely of a plan to go out here, and already Felcane is just keeping hold of this board. He's running a little bit dry on the card draw now with just a Chaos Strike, but there are so many draws that you could get into that, that oh. negate that problem, then he's going to be doing okay. I feel like it might just be go time now, based on that Elemental Allies draw. Because now he can activate that Elemental Allies with the two Elementals he has in hand, one being the Mana Giant. But in order to do that, he has to get the Mana Giant cheap. Which means he needs to start playing the Coin, the Arcane Missiles from the Violet Spellwing, the Learn Draconic that's generated, the oh, Elemental Allies. Doesn't he do that next turn? He can go Allies into Violet Spellwing this turn, and then go the turn after, right? Sure. Gives him one more draw to find mm. something supporting. The issue is the chip damage that you're taking in the meantime. Like, doing it now also has the upside of removing this three damage from play, so you don't potentially take three again, which That's could be a big true. deal. Here. Um, and also, this plays the spell wing, right? So you're now committed to getting the giant down next turn to fill up the elemental chain. That's true. That's true. I, I think Boston is in a position where he needs to do, his, uh, do it in this order, though, because he doesn't gain any repeat value. Uh, next turn from any of these cards, right? Uh, Ray of Frost, I'm loosely counting. Whereas, mm -hmm. I, I think if he gets you know, a magic trick, obviously there's the invocation, but wise. even like Primordial Studies, uh, Cram Session, like, uh, Cyclone is a big one, of course. Like, all these cards, or most of the cards in his deck, uh, I'll actually help him out a lot next turn. He just has the room for it. So I do like this whole little bit. Well, so my argument was that he didn't have to be that worried about not having something to replace value because he was completing his Elemental Allies quest, which does that for him anyway, right? He's going to draw a bunch more spells after the fact, so... I don't know. Well, he certainly got paid out, I can Told tell you, you that much. <laughs> the one turn of greed, strictly better. And I think, regardless of opinions on, on the way round he went. And obviously there is no huge payoff here, don't get me wrong. I think mm -hmm. Boston, rightly or wrongly, could have afforded that turn of greed, right? I think he was, he was never going to be dead. I think there's always a decent recovery chance. So I see it paid off there for Boston. And this is huge. This coin is the giant, use this to proc the allies, draw more spells, play more spells, and then oh, Cyclone yeah. at the end. Okay. <laughs> Even gets a cram session as well. Studies, magic trick. Probably just. 
Well. So Falcane, Falcane's got the best clap of all the salty claps I've yeah. ever seen. Falcane has the best one. I, I like that, that it's like his, his hands are joined at the base, at the palm. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. Just clap, like, that's what I want Language Hacker to do all the time, because he claps a lot. Time of intellect, primordial studies, pick the good one. Oh, good pick the okay. good one. Thank you, font of power. Uh, Whatever. Avalanche, right? It's just sure. I mean, yeah, he played Elementals last turn, but he can't play it next turn. Right. But sure. I'm sure we'll be I able to make fine. something happen yeah. somewhere along the line, yeah. I, I think Boston might win this without ever having to play it anyway, so <laughs> just pick a big dude. Well, will he, though? I mean, is there ever a world? Like, this is where that three damage that Bosden took might just end up being a little bit costly, right? But I could, still don't but... think Felcane's quite going to get there over the course of a couple of turns. Agreed, yeah. I, I, The Nova's a big deal here for me uh, because that's the one where Bosden can ignore the minion I pressures and push, patient. right? Mm. So this turn from Falcane would need to be some kind of clear which on six mana and no weapon equipped seems mm. difficult, I'm going to say. Uh, so I think, like, okay, well, if there's a two-turn clear set up, if it's just a weapon, okay, he kills something, pushes face. Or at best, if it's Marrow Slicer into Blade Dance, that still has to go quite well for Felcane. Here, though, he's yeah. been forced into this Lapidary in which Bosden can just Nova next turn to forget about the minion. Sure. I mean, he has spell damage, brain freeze as well, so he could uh, just straight sure. up kill it. Yeah. I'm just thinking, do, what what if he can he spell damage into like, what does a Pex's blast to the face do? That's what I'm looking. at. <laughs> I mean, I think that's almost just the turn. Yeah, is like you do this, you brain freeze, freeze blast, you Pex's yeah. the face. You could just go cram session alongside that as well. What Buzzdon would do for a frostbolt? Just saying, throwing it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frostbolt, Frostbolt ends the game. Mirror Image, Ice Barrier probably yeah. end the game, but Frostbolt like 100% ends the game. I wonder if... Yeah, I mean, I, I like the draw. I'm just actually having a quick glance and seeing what kind of impact, whether it's mental or not, would the uh, the Spellbender have? It, like, does it's he a good need, point. Does he need to cast Apex's Blast this turn? I don't think so. What if he just plays a secret and says to Felcane, now you're going to play your turn in a weird order, because you're going to have to. Playing it now while he has all the spell damage could change the breakpoints of, like, which minions he needs to have survive if, like, Blade Dance Clear comes down and hits a few things specifically, maybe. He does have a lab partner in hand to make up some of that as well, though. <laughs> yeah. I think I just like playing it. Okay. So currently seven in hand. Which costs him one, two, three, four mana. So two, four, six. He would be one off, I think, even with one maker into twin slicer. He can only play five twin slicers for exactly ten. Impatient. And in which he may as well play six in hero power, right? Hmm? Well, he doesn't have six. He has to spend oh, two on, on the second. one maker on first second. to get it. Yeah, yeah, he's on second, yeah. 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 Yeah, for a second, I thought that was a, a raw twin slice, but yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. You wouldn't have had the mana anyway. Yep. There's so many things wrong with what you said, Raven, that I can't even cover it all. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things wrong with this series from Falcon's <laughs> point of view that you can't cover it all either, so we're just we're just living in that world right now. Yep. Another double jump. It's just not enough. Wow. Hey. Yikes. Well, File that away under Y for yikes, Raven. That was not a series whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> it was for one of the players, because uh, it was probably the easiest match, competitive match of Hearthstone they might have ever played. Because I'm not saying Boston had to do nothing that game, but the decisions weren't extremely high level. He just had to play well, and th that was a 3-0. And, and he's now on what, like 4-2? That's secured, or at least likely, secured his position, especially because the win versus Felcane, if he goes into that three-way tiebreaker, he'll gain a good chunk of points from Felcane as well to help out there. So that's actually a, a pretty big deal there and much needed for Bosden because he did not have the best seasons of, uh, of it himself either, this one. 
Yeah, so Felkane still has him on Tiebreaker 2 right now as it stands, but obviously Bosden, if it comes to a head-to-head situation between them, will now have um, Felkane on Tiebreaker 1. So depending right. on how that ends up being a two-way tie, three-way tie, whatever it does, uh, things could get a little bit messy. But it does mean as each player gets their way to four wins in Division B, that's kind of the golden area because there aren't too many players who are capable of getting to four wins left at right, this point. Right. Um, Wama can do it, but he only has one match remaining. And then everyone below that is only at two wins or less with one or zero matches remaining. So four wins is definitely the sweet spot that you're looking for in Division B. And that's absolutely what Boston was able to pick up.